Welcome to the show, by the way. Um, I was excited to talk to you about Daisies because, um, you know, it's a song about keeping your dreams on track. You know, you have, you have a certain way you're going and you're going to try and keep it going no matter what, no matter what people say. And I, I was thinking about the pandemic and, it's, and how it's affecting dreams of people right now. You know, people had plans, people had dreams, people had a course, and that's, it sort of stopped. So I wonder how you're listening to the song now uh, through the lens of the pandemic. Well, I think, it, I think it, what it did is it definitely brought great pause to everyone. Um, and in some ways, you know, I, uh, I've been saying that like your worst demons showed up at your front door, knocked on your door and said, hey, do you want to hold hands for three months? <laughs> Why don't you face me? You can't, you can't run from me now. You have nowhere to go. You have absolutely nowhere to go. So let's have a chat. And it was, it was a, you know, and it has been, look, it's been an opportunity. Obviously it's been incredibly overwhelming and intense and, you know, a nightmare for some, it's been so many different levels of emotions. Right. Um, but it has been, uh, you know, everything is a yin or a yang. Everything is duality in, in life. And you can see some positive in, in horrible, horrible situations. If you, if you choose to, that's not mm. just being like an, a, as an insane optimist. It's like, there is a choice. That's the free will here. But daisies for me, yeah, it, initially it was just kind of the commentary about, you know, when I wrote it, it was like the commentary on how people really like, they, they think you're crazy. You know, they think you're out of your mind or like, you know, they laugh at you or, or the size of your dreams or, you know, they go, oh, I'm not sure you, you can do that. A, you're a woman or you're a person of color or you're, you know, you come from a different socioeconomic background or what have you. So of course you'll never be able to be that. You have to, you know, blah, blah, blah. But what it, what it did in the pandemic is that it, it gave pause in that I feel like a lot of people go, a lot of people were like, oh, I really put a lot of dreams on the shelf and mm. thought I could easily ex I could just like access them whenever I wanted to mm -hmm. and I can't now. So by golly, when I get out of this thing, I'm going to go for it. And I'm just, it's almost like I'm in training now I'm in dream training. And finally, when I get back on the track, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to take things for granted again. I'm happy you mentioned that the song is about, you know, um, in some ways being told you can't do things and then sort of proving that you can. And, it, you know, it, it thinks me, it reminds me of a lot of the songs you've written that I never really listened to in that way when I was getting ready for this interview. And I was thinking about Firework and I was thinking about Roar and I was thinking about this song. Are, are you singing to yourself as well? Oh my God, yeah. I mean, all those songs are cousins. And the truth of the matter is, is like when I'm writing those songs, I'm, I'm in the worst place of my life. Is that so? It's not like I'm like celebrating and by celebrating, I write a song. It's like something comes over me and, and, and kind of writes the song, you know, like my soul is the ghost writer. It says, all right, I'm going to take over because obviously you can't function anymore. You're too depressed or you're too in your head or blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to try and re-inspire you with a little nugget of hope through, a, through a message, through a song. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I turn to music as my solace and as my, you know, to speak my language of my heart and my soul, especially when I'm, when I'm in those dark times. Um, but I'm, I, I'm happy to be synonymous with, you know, messages of hope. Um, and I, I think I write these songs that are hopeful because I first and foremost need the hope. It's not easy, I'm not going to get out of bed. It, but it's not easy. I mean, you said something about that earlier when you were saying that, you know, it's, it's, it's not about being relentlessly optimistic. It's about, you know, there's a duality and we have choices we want to make. But, you know, it's hope is not something that comes easy to people. And, you know, even, even now, it's, it's like I'm someone who likes to push away cynicism as much as I possibly can. Sure. But it's there. Like, was it always there? Was there a moment where you realized hope had a place in your, in your heart or hope had a place in your life? Yeah, I think hope has always been an option for, for me, you know, to think about, um, I think because of my relationship with God and with something bigger than me, 
in that like, you know, if I'm the only one controlling my destiny, of course it's going to be like, I'm going to drive it into the ground. <laughs> but I, I, my hope, that, my hope is that something bigger than me created me for a purpose and created me for a reason and that I'm not disposable and that, you know, every person that's been created has a purpose. I mean, I, I like to get into it so deeply, like, the one, like one of the, the things that confirms it for me is like, if we weren't, if we weren't, you know, all so individual or unique or, or truly, truly somewhat special, why the hell do we have all different fingerprints? I know that's some ancient aliens right there, but like seven and a half billion people have a different fingerprint, all mm -hmm. of us, mm -hmm. like we have all the same, we have a lot of the same genes, but we all have a different fingerprint. Like mm. there's, there's some like sacred geometry there. There's some like math that is insane. Newton, Einstein, God, like that is going on that is bigger than me. And I'm, and I'm grateful that, that it's bigger than me because it seems like it has my best interest. In it is interesting to hear you say that and please know that um, you can, we don't have to talk about this, but I know that coming from an evangelical background, the way that you did, you came, you grew up in a very religious household and, I, and I've read you talk about how the challenges involved in that. And I've also read you talk about the work you've been doing now with your family on that. A lot of people in your situation would not find their way back to God. A lot of people in your situation would, would, would not find their way or maybe find a way of resenting resenting that it's interesting to me that you found your way back to it or you found your, you found another path up the mountain you know well the, yeah, i mean yeah god to me is not an old you know white dude with a beard on a throne I mean, like leon russell yeah with the big hair and yeah yeah I no sorry i mean god is god, <laughs> god god is more than human god is god does not have that human form i mean it's an energy it's a it's, 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 it's not as definable as, as we'd like to think in our small, you know, 2%, 3% capacity brain. So um, it's much bigger than me. That's all I know is that it's bigger than me and I'm grateful for it. You've been, um, you've been outspoken about mental health recently. And I, when I was getting ready to look at the record, um, I heard you say the new record is about finding your smile again. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could tell me what you mean by that. Um, it's just, you know, I've lost, I lost my smile. I, I don't know if my smile was ever fully like authentically mine. Um, but I was riding on the high of a smile for a long time, which was, you know, the validation and love and admiration of from the outside world. And then that shifted because like my career was on this trajectory where it was going up, 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 up. And then I had like the smallest shift. It wasn't like that huge, maybe from an outside perspective, but for me, it was seismic. And it was like, you know, they say if a, if a ship is one degree off from their navigation, they'll land on like a different continent sometimes. So you're saying that things were going and going and going, and then they just, they, they just moved ever so slightly, perhaps the point of just full 90 degree trajectory and it, and it yeah, kind of freaks they, you out. Yeah, they, it, it, more than slightly, but they moved and it was the first time to feel that. And I had built, you know, I had built so much on, I had given so much out and I, I it literally like kind of broke me in half. I think I had broken up with my boyfriend who's now my baby daddy to be. Um, and then I was like excited about flying high off of the next record and the, and the record didn't get me high anymore. You know, like it didn't make me, excited well the validation didn't get me high and so like i just crashed i just crashed mm. and um it was a good crash it was like a necessary brokenness like it was so important for me to be broken so that i could find my wholeness in a whole different way and and be you know more dimensional than just like living my life like a thirsty pop star all the time yeah, I mean it's 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 a it's a type of gratitude that's that not everybody gets, you know, when things don't go the way you want to find gratitude and that takes something. I have I think I have time for one more question if you can if you can handle it. Teenage Dream came out 10 years ago and that kind of that kind of caught me off guard. And what a big record it was. Not to mention Firework which I mentioned before, but you know, nominated for six Grammys, broke all kinds of records and all that. Given everything you're telling me, like 
when you hear those songs, when they come on in the store, if they come on in the bar, if they come on in the, in the car, do you, do you recognize that person? Does it feel like the same person to you? Yeah, I mean, that person was a little bit more head in the clouds, fantasy land, escapism central, you know, like permanently at Disneyland. Uh, <laughs> so, it, you know, that still exists with me. Like, I have such an imagination. Like, I love creating worlds and I do love creating moments of escape and fun and memories. And there's a groundedness now that that is there. Um that was not there then um you know th th that was like an ignorance is bliss time yeah and it really was it was like almost like the internet had just kind of started to happen social media wasn't in full fledged and you know we weren't in the middle of a pandemic or a revolution so it was there was this beautiful ignorance is bliss and you meet people that still live in that state and you're like oh my gosh how lucky are you but you know, I would rather feel all of these feelings than just be lost in ignorance is bliss because I think there's, there's deeper feelings when you survive something or when you live through something or you, look, you live and learn. And it's not just all, you know, a fantasy lifestyle. It, that, sounds, that sounds like the definition of gratitude, really. You know, it sounds like, you know, when you, when you, and this sort of what's been following me around this whole interview is that, you know, we say when things don't go your way, you have to find gratitude. When you look back on who you were back then, you know, you were a different person, but you found gratitude for who you are right now and everything you have. It's, it's, it's meaningful, Katie. Gratitude is probably the thing that saved my life because if I didn't find that, I would have wallowed in my own sadness and probably just jumped. Yeah. But I found the ways to be grateful. And every morning I wake up, it's the first thing I say in my, this is the very first thing I say out loud before I check my phone, because, you know, that's the second thing we all do, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just wake up and I say, thank you, God, for today. I am grateful in every way. And you when know, it's really, really hard, when I'm like, when I'm, the sh when I'm in a mood, which I can swing, I just like walk around and go, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Even though I'm in a mood, I am grateful. <laughs> and that's been, that's been um, the light at my end of the tunnel. They say the louder you scream it, the more grateful you are. I've heard that before. <laughs> well, it's, it's been a joy talking to you. And I just want to say, you know, I'm, I'm ultimately very grateful, you know, getting ready to do this interview. I, I went back and listened to a lot of your records and I just think about all the people who have done their makeup going listening to your music. And I think about all the people who have gone to the best nights of their life, the soundtrack by their music. And I don't think we give enough credit to music that makes us feel joy. As much as I do appreciate your music that makes us feel depth, I, I don't think we give enough credit to music that makes us feel joy. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. So nice to talk to you. Thanks, Tom. You've been a delight. I'll speak with you anytime.